Hello, so if you happen to be a fan of the song Not Gonna Settle on our album, the first one, and you'd like to know a little bit more about the singer or the lyrics behind it, you're in the right place, because that's basically what we're doing today in this video. So welcome to vlog 40, that's 4-0. I honestly, when we started out, never imagined we'd make so many videos, but I'm so glad we have, and thank you guys so much for being here. Anyway, this week it's a lyrics deep dive. Um, so far we've done one with uh, Tommy Saunders, who I've known for years, and we've done one with Karen Roberts, who I've known for years. But this week I thought we'd reach out to someone that we made friends with on this project. So this week we are talking to Jenny Morrison, the awesome singer and bassist of Orlando, Florida Scout Punk's Tef London, about her lyrics for Not Gonna Settle and uh, when we first met them and went to the house and recorded and what the lyrics mean. Uh, it was really good fun and just quickly I should warn you that the studio room that we filmed in uh, is actually currently being um, decorated, so it's a complete mess. So prepare for a kind of chaos in five, four, three, so we never met before we recorded things four years ago and we just kind of cold called you and um, turned up on your doorstep. What do you remember about that day? <laughs> you know, I told you I was going to try to remember some like this random night from, from four years ago. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind, of, it's kind of a blur and we were drinking beers anyway, so it's already a little bit blurry. <laughs> uh, but I, I do remember you you messaging me, right, or messaging us and I happen to be the one who got it because I wake up the earliest in the band. Um, and so... Reading that, you know, when you're in a band, you get all these messages from people all the time, people that are like you and they have some wild idea and they want to collab with you on something and they want to make music in some way or they want to do some great idea with your band. They saw you this one time at this one thing and they want to do something. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. Just send over your tracks. I'll look at it. Figuring I would never, ever hear from you. Again. <laughs> like, that, like that was going to be the end of it. Like like everybody else that ever writes Tep London. Sure. And so I, I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, just send it, whatever. And you actually sent over tracks and then you sent over like uh, paragraphs and paragraphs of like what you wanted and you wanted a guitar solo and like lyrics. And I was like, oh, does he know I'm a fucking bass player? <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, oh my God, he thinks I'm going to sing this song. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know what though? He's in the UK. He thinks he's going to come to the USA and come to Florida and I'm going to sing this song. Yeah. Okay. So I put it like, you kind of filed that away in my, like, that'll never fucking happen <laughs> uh, category. And I'm pretty sure you followed up with me a couple of times about it. And so, man, and then you were like a week out or something and you were like, all right, well, we're going to be there in a week. <laughs> where, where would we be going or something like that? And so I sent you my address and I told the guys, I'm like, I think this guy's actually going to come here and he wants us to, we're going to record a guitar solo and we're going to write lyrics. And so I did, I sat down and wrote lyrics thinking, okay, this guy will never actually show up though. <laughs> uh, lo and behold, like a couple days before, you're like, all right, we'll be there at this time. And here we are. And then uh, I told the guys, I was like, Hey, so this strange guy from the UK is coming over to my house where we rehearse and, but like, I've never met him before. And so if you guys could a be here early in case he's like really creepy and be like, we need extra people here so that we outnumber them just in case they're like robbers. So I was like, okay, we just need an extra horn player or somebody to come be with us. So we had one of our horn players come. That's why there were three of us just in case you were a burglar. And then of course, you know, you have to decide who's going to, um, pack just in case and uh not you know it's a usa thing anyway yeah. <laughs> uh and so uh, but you guys were totally cool and you showed up with your cute little accents and you get all your little <laughs> people named andy and, yeah. just, and with all this shit you guys parked on the wrong side of the street and you guys were just adorable and we had beers and you guys camped out on the floor and you even brought lights um and uh sang a song or we did a guitar solo and we were in and out and it was we had a, a lot of fun and i made new friends for life and uh got to be a part of one of the coolest projects ever oh thanks yeah we had a great time yeah i forgot we sort of parked on the wrong side of the road in fact the wrong road as well um <sighs> so um, i actually had tons and tons and tons of uh compliments on your vocal on that song people really love oh, it well, uh, but the, the response should be hey did you know she's actually a bass player like <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, no, are you, so are you a bass player or are you guitar player relegated to bass? No, I'm a bass player. Like, Excellent. that's my thing. And, uh, you know, I, I, people frequently ask me, they're like, well, well, how do you sing and play bass at the same time? It's such a, like, a weird 
mix, right? Because, you know, sometimes you're, rhythmically you're generally doing something different than you are melodically. Yeah. And so uh, it, obviously the answer is practice like anything else. Uh, but now it's it's gotten to the point where I, I sing and play bass so, so frequently together that I feel so uncomfortable singing without holding a bass that I go into the studio holding a bass because I feel like such a nerd without one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the same. Like when people are, like especially with all the collab videos and things people have been doing, I get sent requests now and then people are like, oh, do you just want to like sing on camera and dance? And I'm like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> like, yeah, just take the instrument away. I could not be more awkward. That sounds horrendous. I don't think there's enough beers in the world. But like, <laughs> but I am a yeah, guitarist I... relegated to bass, really. Um, it just happened to be the instrument I've done the most. But yeah, I couldn't say so for like the new, the live band for what we're doing. Um, the idea originally was like, I was like, I might as well play bass because they were quite complex bass lines. I was like, I can't play that and sing at the same time not a chance so yes, fair play you can, to you Andy. all you want to do is practice oh but that's yeah that's the magic word that nobody wants to do well what you really need is a chick bassist because there are so few of them in the world so you're just on the wrong side of the water see yeah. no you're on the wrong side of the water. <laughs> yeah zebra head um <laughs> Uh, so in that last week then that you had to write the uh, song, how did you find it? Uh, so how did you come up with the lyrics and how did you find the song? Obviously, having never met you guys before, it's a sort of a song from a stranger and out of the, out of the normal style that you play with Tef London. So how was that for you? Yeah, it was definitely a lot poppier than we do with Tef London, but the, the melody came to me really, really easily. Um, and actually, you know, the lyrics are a little bit repetitive because the, the melody is poppy itself. And so it needs that songs sure. like that require a strong hook like that um and so uh it actually you know I, now that i'm divorced and that song has come out now people are like oh this is kind of a reflection on your relationship and i like to be like yeah sure it is but however the truth be told it was actually um a conflict with a a band member at the time and it you know andy like there's probably very few things that are harder in the world than being a band leader uh, because you sure. just want to please everybody. And like, I have had a child. I'm a single mom. I am a teacher and an educator. And I've done all these other like really complicated things. And they don't even hold a candle to being a, like how hard it is to be a band leader. Um, and so it was just uh, a conflict with a, a horn player who had a lot of uh, complaints, but they didn't want to do anything about it. And I was like, you know what? If it, you, it makes you so unhappy, then you can pack your shit in. And uh, and sometimes it just comes to that. And I didn't, of course, I would never mean that those, these people in Temple London are my family. Sure. Um, but you know, at, it, when you're feeling emotional, um, that's part of it. And then there's also a point where like, you have to stick up for yourself and your boundaries and, and who you are. And so certainly, you know, my relationship played into that too, into writing that. Um, but it, you know, our other relationships with our band members are is equally important. Sometimes it's your support system, especially if you don't have a lot of family. Sure, no, absolutely. And that's really interesting because I think um, like when reviews, like with you know some, some sort of album reviews, they try to figure out what certain songs are about um, when the lyrics, they actually, no one ever really picked up that it was a sort of relationship song. It was always picked up as a kind of self-worth song, which I really liked. And that's really interesting because I, I mean, I, I'd assume the same, I assumed, um, especially as you know, the, the, your, your marriage ended that maybe it was about, you know, it was like a, a, a song about relationships or a song about a situation or maybe like a friend of yours that was going through something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I would have assumed it was a relationship thing. So that's interesting. It's a band relationship because you're right. Really like my bandmates from Fandango, like we haven't been a band for years properly, but they're still my brothers. Like, you know, Tom is still like one of my best friends and we all have like WhatsApp groups and we talk as much as we can. And yeah, that's, yeah, they are. It's, it's, they're really important relationships that will like stay with you for life. 100%. Yeah, and it's and it's real and it's visceral and it is all those things too. It certainly um, has those significant elements of, of being about self worth and sticking up for yourself and what you believe in, um, and you know there's there's lines in there where you know everybody wants to give you advice. People tell you you know you're you're being too intense and things like that, which is something that. Um, maybe you don't can't relate to as much, Andy, but like I, as a woman, I get told that all the time. I'm being uh, intense or too bossy or too bitchy, and all I'm doing is drawing a boundary. Sure. But because I'm a woman, it's perceived as as me being um, too intense, and, and people will say, "Well, that you know that scares guys away, right?" When you when you act like that, and it's like, "Wow, really sticking up for myself can scare somebody away," but that's the person that I need to be. And, and that, so, yeah, it certainly has a, a significant element of self-worth, too. Yeah, I'm glad it's uh, covered that as well. And that's, I think it's a good conversation to sort of put in people's heads. 
um, about that kind of thing because it is one of those sort of very one-sided uh, viewpoints uh, sort of you know between the two genders like sort of you know relationships and things so yeah it's good to cover it okay so um tell us what you got you've got coming up so obviously like the you know the covid's a bit of a nightmare at the moment but where can people look for tef london whatever else you do and give yourself a plug sure uh check us out on instagram at tef london ska we just uh this past year and despite all the covid stuff we put together a epic no effects medley that we recorded in my living room um uh, no effects even shouted it out it is a really intense medley of the very best uh, no effects songs with a four piece horn section. It's on YouTube. Just type in no effects medley. It'll be the first big thing that comes up. You'll see us. Um, and uh, come just like we were talking about, come write us a nasty comment about, uh, you know, girls who play bass and uh, what they can do. And uh, we're, we're ready for it. Yeah. You can knock them out of the park. <laughs> So let's say, right. So for those that don't know, uh, no effects did a new version of Linonium and, um, did two videos, which is uh, clips from bands that covered it from YouTube. And you guys were literally starting the second one, which was rad. Like... That is really cool. And you know, the, the cooler part is, is like the, you know, that, that was the one with Streetlight and stuff. So that was, that was pretty cool. Nice, nice. Cool. Well, thanks so much for chatting to us. Um, thanks, Andy. Stay safe over there in Florida and um, we'll come and see you soon. We'll see you soon. Yeah. So huge thanks to Jenny for taking the time to talk to us. It was really insightful and really nice to catch up. Also, massive shout out to Angel and Aaron. The three of them made for a really welcome environment for two very weary travellers at the time. And uh, we made friends for life, like she said, which is a privilege I don't take lightly from this project. It's a really nice thing to have new friends all around the world. And we'll make more as we go, I'm sure. Anyway, that's all for this week. Hope you enjoyed the uh, lyrics deep dive. Always find them really insightful and kind of interesting when um, the meaning is something different to what we imagine sometimes and it evokes a different story to what we imagine in the first place. So that's always really good fun to delve into. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. We'll see you next week with something very, very different. Peace out. Big love. Bill thinks you should all uh, subscribe, don't you, mate? You think it's just subscribe? I'm not sure he actually cares. Um, no? No, no. He doesn't care. I do.